It's been a long time since I've tried a rabbit hole, but that is only half true. I did recently try the Blackened X Rabbit Hole collab, which is a, I believe is a rye whiskey finished in Calvados casks. However, uh, today we're trying something totally different. I got a box in the mail from Rabbit Hole, which is pretty cool because you don't usually just get art like this. And I, I'm calling this art because I'm envious. This looks like a, a very nice staging. We've got Kave, who's the owner of Rabbit Hole and the founder and CEO and all that kind of cool stuff, uh, hanging out in his garden and they are announcing the newest release of their Founders Collection finished in Mizunara casks. Now that's interesting because they have done this once before. They released the Founders Collection of Mizunara, ooh, 2020 slash 2021. So it's been a couple of years, but it hasn't been that long. However, uh, it was one of my favorite pours that I've ever had. I tried to chase down a bottle so I could review it properly for the channel. Uh, I couldn't, so I ended up having to gather a couple of samples from people I know who were lucky enough to get bottles. But in the end, it was one of my favorite whiskeys that I've ever had. So I'm really excited about this one. They sent me uh, an interesting little postcard. It's got some Japanese, it's got some English on it. And what's interesting here is that Mizunara is a Japanese oak. Japanese oak uh, is not particularly easy to work with and it's not particularly inexpensive. So we're working with something that's already expensive. We're taking their oldest whiskeys, as we know, that that's what goes into the Founders Collection. And they're putting it in an expensive, tricky to work with barrel, which explains why the bottles were so expensive. It's kind of cool. It looks like they are doing a sort of fusion, you know, kind of trying to play up the Japanese element, or not play it up, but maybe pay homage to it or make sure it's, it's known. And they sent me the sample in what appears to be a bento box. Now, a bento box is very popular over in Japan, uh, but let's go ahead and dig into it. Yeah, we've got a collection of snacks. We've got some uh, watercolors. Most importantly, uh, inside the box here, we have the whiskey itself. Now I love their little style bottles. In the past I've always kind of highlighted the fact that you know I don't care if we receive full bottles but you know it's it's hard to give good coverage to something uh, you know that's just an unlabeled glass bottle that comes in a box and so like this is really cool. This this is kind of their version of a press kit uh, but it has all the info I would want to know. It has the uh, the bottling date. This is a 15 year old age stated whiskey which is kind of bonkers. It's bottled at 103.8 proof 51.9% ABV and it's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished in Mizunari casks. So uh, that overall is everything I would have hoped to see on the retail bottle, which means that this sample is good to go. And it's kind of cool. It uses their full bottle shapes, which are these kind of, they have a, an interesting swoop to them and they've got the rabbit on them and all sorts of stuff. So uh, pretty cool stuff. But I think it's time that we jump into the whiskey. It's always a tough ask when brands ask the consumer to pay north of $1,000 for the whiskey. I believe the MSRP on this is like $1,600. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'll I'll put it in the original one was fifteen hundred dollars which was a pretty tough ask but the box is also the coolest box i've ever seen in whiskey it's got a magnetic fronts and sides and backs and you can take the top off and reposition the slats so it's a display and all sorts of crazy stuff but the important question here today is whether or not this whiskey uh, is any good and that's what we're going to talk about now so this is first take i'm going to give this my first taste today we'll see how it is and then i'll taste it a couple more times uh, before we get the full review up on raiders but overall, I mean, right away, I can see the viscosity on this thing is pretty crazy. There's a lot going on here. The first hit, there's like barrel char, there's black chi, there's like kind of a, a sandalwood element that I really like. It's got a big sweet caramels. It's almost got a cherry pop, like a note of cherry. There's tobacco, graham cracker. That black tea element, kind of like a sweet tea sticks around. It's really... Uh, really evident, really clear, really prominent, really kind of delicious. It's 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 piqued my interest for sure. On the palate, the texture on the palate here is super big, very syrupy, very heavy, very rich, complex. It's lots of layers. There's a big black tea note still. It's like a sweet tea, black tea, confectioner sugar, maple, like a honey glaze. There's this big tobacco element, this big sandalwood element. There is a lot of oak here, but it's not dry. It's not dry and it's not drying on your palate, like it's not wisping all of the moisture away. It has kind of a root beer character, like a root beer and a cola. Uh, there's a lot going on. This reminds me a lot of that first release. It's big, it's rich, it's bold, it's it's really satisfying, and just when it's starting to get sweet, it gets really savory. Uh, really big fan of this so far. This uh, The proof feels nice. I think a couple of proof points higher would not have hurt it, but I have no doubt that the aging probably brought the proof down a little bit. At 51%, it's drinking really pleasantly it's kind of this big viscosity it like coats your palate it's got this really satisfying kind of chewiness to it so no need to go higher I think it could have without being hot but there's basically no whisper of ethanol here at all it's really really easy on your palate as far as the ethanol is concerned the back palate and the finish uh, lots of tobacco here again lots of big sweet tea a little bit of like prune fig raisin um, some more date fruit 
Some more of that sweet tea. Overall, I mean, this is just, this is fantastic stuff. That is crazy good whiskey. I feel the ethanol just a touch on the back of the throat, but for north of 50%, I would expect that. No one's gonna drink this and go, oh man, this is hot whiskey. This is really well integrated. The Misionara shows just enough. What I do like, it keeps the flavor profile together. Like it adds notes like black tea and sweet tea in sandalwood. But unlike Ambarana or some of those other more exotic, more heavy-handed, uh, it doesn't change the entire profile completely. So it's very additive. It's very complimentary. Uh, really, really nice stuff. So I expect that this will continue to open up. I mean, this already has some really gorgeous color to it, as you can see. Uh, you know, if we hold this sample kind of side by side, really nice stuff. Now, is it worth the money? I can't tell you how to spend your money. And I know that uh, I tried to buy the first edition and failed. So I can probably see myself going ahead and buying the second edition. Now, uh, the reason I say that is because I own Navalier and Navalier I thought was incredible as well. That was their French Oak 16 year old Kentucky Street bourbon. I thought the presentation box was incredible and truly it's one of my favorite things to bring to tastings. And I've done charity tastings around it as well. It's just an impressive whiskey top to bottom. So. I'm gonna have to grapple with that. Um, you know, it's a lot of money, but I also really think the whiskey is good. And if you're going to spend a lot of money, it may as well come in a cool package as well. I don't feel like this is one of those releases where they put a bad whiskey in a really cool package in the hopes that someone would be suckered into buying it. I think they realize that if we're going to make an expensive whiskey, it has to be cool in every single way. The jury's out on whether you should pay a thousand plus dollars for a bottle of whiskey, but I do think that this is incredible stuff. If you see it, it is definitely worth a bar pour uh, because I think more people should experience good Mizunara finished whiskeys. And the ones that are on the market are currently tough to get. Angel's Envy Founders Collection is really tough to get it's super expensive so uh left and right it's very tough to get a good museum art finished whiskey and it always comes at a price uh that's the first take for today guys really nice stuff i love this i apparently i'm gonna go have some snacks while i work today a little bento it away uh which is a really cool presentation i like when brands are very thoughtful about you know tying in the cultural elements of the things that they bring into their whiskey uh, and that's just kind of neat and you know who doesn't who doesn't love a snack so thanks for joining me guys my name is jay better known as take for whiskey readers as always uh, if you're enjoying these videos drop us a like and maybe subscribe we are rolling out lots of great content all of the time uh, you can check out other videos here on the channel you can also check out full reviews at whiskeyreaders.com and in the meantime uh you know go enjoy a video and i'll see you for another whiskey video here on the whiskey readers youtube uh, very soon cheers guys Thank you.